I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV, and I'm here to let you know about the two events down at the Rio that are going to play down to a World Series of Poker bracelet winner today. The first is the shootout event, and that had a $5,000 buy-in. 360 players entered the tournament, and only six remain at the final table. Sirius Jamshidi, Tim West, and Greg Mueller are all making appearances. We spoke to Greg before the final table began. What's been going on with you lately? Uh, just getting in the groove slowly. Getting in the groove and you made it to a final table. Looks like you're in the groove. It took me a while. I went over for my first four and then cashed in the uh, 10K mixed. And now I'm at the shootout final table. Well, what makes shootout tournaments so different? I mean, I know the basic, the basic theory behind them is that one player will win every table. But how does that change your game? Well, there's no bubble. Now there's a bubble, so it will change for this one. Um, okay. But, like, if you come in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth, it pays the same. Nothing. So does that up the aggression? It does. It did for me. I got off to, uh, I was playing really aggro in the beginning to try and get an early chip lead so that later when it did get shorthanded, it would, uh, it would help me. And okay. both times going into heads up play in the first two tables, I had a, a chip lead, which was because I was playing the, the non-bubble theory. This is a little different. First place is half a million and sixth place is like 35,000. <laughs> Quite so, the difference there. Yeah, so moving up the spots um, for people might, it might make it easier to be more aggressive, although everybody might think that way you know people that need the money a little bit more might sit back a little might bit. sit back and so I mean I'm trying to win the bracelet bad so I might play a little more aggressive okay hoping to counteract that theory well tell me about your first few tables in the tournament any my first table was contenders? real tough yeah. I had Lee Markold in oh. seat three and right across from him was Lee Watkinson in seat eight it was oh, kind of funny <laughs> and uh yeah I had That's really uh, funny. yeah and I had both Lee's it was, it was a tough tale at Mike Sexton um, Rob Holnick, uh, the kid that won the Aussie Millions, oh, okay. um, and like four other online wizards. It, it seemed like a very tough table. Who did you again, go heads up with? I went. I, I don't even know. His, John was his name. He played very good against me. Um, I had a big lead, and he got to I think a small lead again, and then and then it took a long time for me to beat him. But no, that one was a very tough table. I thought, and then the second table also was was tough, but it got heads up really quick. I think the Who way was they. There? We had Isaac Haxton in C1, who I hear, who plays tough, but I also hear he's like a demon. And he, he was like the first or second one to go, which was good okay. news because I knew he'd be tough. And Bert was in the top three. And Bert Booten. Bert Booten, who's also uh, tough. Quite a character. Quite a character. I enjoy playing with Bert. We play <laughs> cash games a lot. So he, uh, he was tough. The other guys, I didn't know their names. The guy I played heads up, Adam Levy. His name's Ruthless, Ruthless Online, yeah. and I hear he's real tough, too. Yeah, That's the thing. If you don't know people, it doesn't mean anything. you know. Yeah, so I played him, and he battled back a, a, a long time. Time heads up also. So. But you triumphed. I did. <laughs> and now you're going into the final table. Yes. So what do you know about the other players at the final table? In most tournaments, you would have played with them a lot already, but here you are going against nine people right. that you haven't played this tournament Six with. only, actually. It's oh, six-handed, six so me. five other players. Five yeah. other players that you haven't I, really played with You know what's with funny? I've played with one one of the players, Leo uh, Wolpart, I think his name is. Okay. Um, it's funny. We've played two tournaments together. The first one was in Canada in a smaller tournament. He was to my left. I didn't know who he was. He wore this, like greasy shirt and his hat and he just he was sitting immediately to my left he never folded when I raised he re me a lot and I was like like who is dude, this guy who are you like <laughs> you know I like I get them you know and uh and then we played last year in one of the world series events and I was to his left and I was messing with him big time he remembered you and oh yeah and, and then he came up to me at the break and he goes you know what FBT I had a lot more fun sitting on your left you know, because so, I uh, I was calling all his raises and repopping him all the time. So that was, it was kind of fun. He's a tough player, and uh, so that's the only guy I know. What's the seating arrangement like today? Is he who's to the left? I think we're dead even. Like I think I'm in the okay. one hole and he's in the four hole. So all I right. think we got two between us on each side. So I think it's it's fair, kind of. And uh, the other guys, I I didn't I don't know basically a thing about them. I'm sure they're good. They won their first two tables, so they're doing something right. Definitely. So, yeah. So last year you came so close to a bracelet. Here you are again. There's only five more guys to beat. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... It sounds easy, right? Five it, guys it, to beat? It does, but I mean, there could be one guy to beat. And as I found out last year, second, eighth, tenth, twelfth. I mean, I had like five or six top 20 finishes, and it's not a bracelet. So it's it's never done until it's done. So, I mean, I feel good about this one. And Yeah, you got a rest last night? Yeah, yeah, I feel good. Got a couple horses in the ladies' event, and... You know, I'm up early, feeling good. 
hopefully I'll take it down. That's all it takes. Well, good luck down there, Greg. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The other bracelet to be awarded late tonight is that of the $1,500 buy-in Limit Hold'em event. The tournament attracted 880 players, and that built a first-place prize of more than a quarter of a million dollars. Now, 18 of the players will return to play today, but they're going to battle it out till only one remains. Going into play, Vinny Vin was the chip leader. Hopefully, he shows up and plays his stack. Second in chips was Eric Lindgren. Now, Eric already won a bracelet at this year's World Series of Poker. He's looking to claim another one. Another tournament player who is still in the field is Teddy Iceman Monroe, and we talked to him before he sat down to play. Teddy, you're heading into the final two tables of the $1,500 limit event. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like I'm going to win. So how much does Limit Hold'em differ from No Limit Hold'em? What adjustments do you have to make, say, for starting hand requirements, things like that? It's a, uh, it's a grind. It's, it's definitely a grind. You have to have a lot of patience. Uh, you have to be selective uh, on the hands that you play. Uh, and and it's not, it's not, you can't protect your hand like you want to when you're playing No Limit. So what's the best way to play a big hand? Say you're under the gun, you look down at a big pocket pair. You're always going to make that raising limit? Uh, it depends on what, what type of, uh, you know, you, first you got to look at the players and see who you're playing up against. Uh, and then, you know, once you read the table, if you got pocket nines, you might smooth call. It depends on your chip count. Everything play, it plays in a factor at that moment. If I got pocket aces and I'm on the gun, of course, I'm going to raise with aces, kings, and queens. Yeah, I want as many people out as, as possible. You don't want nobody, what we call is gas you. Okay. So how did the tournament go for you? How would you make it this deep? I struggled. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I absolutely got no cards whatsoever. Uh, I survived off of, you know, king high, uh, nine deuce. I was complaining to my uncle. I was, I was catching no cards. But uh, just playing the game for such a long time and having experience, I was able to survive. So what was the field like? Was it a, big, was it a strong field? It was a strong field, definitely tough field. Uh, a lot of great players, which I was happy they got knocked out earlier. So I mean, what do you think of the remaining field? We have Vinny Vin at the top of the chips yeah, that counts. We me. have Eric Lindgren in yeah. second looking for bracelet number yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, me and Vinny, we going hard against each other. We're good friends. Uh, so look forward for the Iceman and Vinny to go hard. You think Vinny's going to show up today? Yeah, he's going to show up. Uh, I don't know. He, I, hope, <laughs> I hope he brings his A game because I definitely got mines with me. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna definitely get froze with the ice, man. He go up against me. I hope I'll be able to take him out. It was a great fight yesterday. Uh, I won two battles, but uh, I just hope he don't show up today. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck down there. Thanks uh, so much, uh, Teddy. Hey, thanks a lot. You can check the results of these events and every other tournament of the World Series of Poker right here on CardPlayer.com. We'll be back throughout the series with more updates. I'm Lizzie Harrison for CardPlayer TV.